WBCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. The longest running pro wrestling radio talk show in the history of terrestrial radio. And he's obviously Michael Cole. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888 Talking wrestling. Yeah. Because that's what this show is about. That's what we've been doing for over 16 no, no, years. No, no, no. It's about sports entertainment. And now here are your hosts of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Will you stop marking out over there? Sorry. Move over, kid. I'm taking your microphone. You're shallow. You know that? <laughs> I'm running on two hours of sleep. I don't remember what the hell I do anymore. Shut up! There's the sound of the bell, and we are set to go. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ron Derry here with you, flying solo at least for a little while. I will be joined, no, not by Twitch, as uh, he has provided another Twitch ditch. We'll see if we can get that trademarked, who knows. But no, I'll be joined by none other than the self-professed Fugazi wrestling fan, Mike Samsel, good longtime friend of the show. He's going to be jumping in to help out things here. Uh, as you can hear, I'm not exactly feeling too hot. Yeah, I'll acknowledge it. I'm not feeling all that great. And in fact, there may be a couple of times where I may have to take a break here to clear the old nostrils, as it were, but still kind of soldiering on through here. And we'll get into a few things, including the fallout from the Backlash pay-per-view, also some money in the bank developments already happening. It's amazing how time flies with that. Also a major return coming to New York. For the first time in a little over 15 years. We'll let you know what's going on with that. Also, a potential battle of the four horsewomen. Hmm, interesting. Actually, a lot of lady news this week, including a television show that's gotten a little bit uh, more time, I guess, on the airwaves. We'll tell you about what's going on with that. As well as a couple of ladies who uh, have some injuries, one of which is more than likely going to go under the knife and the other... Well, is yet to be determined. Also, we've got an interesting development on the UFC front as they've got a new platform with which to provide content. And there might be yet another noted city that's trying to eke its way into the WrestleMania battles for years from now. It almost seems like it's a bidding process that's right up there with the Super Bowl and the Olympics as far as preparing well ahead of time. And we'll get into a whole thing about that. Plus a death to a former WWF star. A noted name, especially for fans of OSW like myself. They tend to mention them just a little bit. And we'll also get into a Major League Wrestling event that's coming up soon that uh, is going to be a little more history made for MLW. And if you haven't had the chance to check it out, Make sure to check out the archives from a few weeks ago when I got to interview current MLW heavyweight champion Shane Strickland. That was certainly a lot of fun. Looking to do more with Court Bauer and the folks over at MLW. But, oh hey, how about this? Look at this guy who just walked in. I, I knew it would be soon. I didn't know it would be this soon. None other than the self-professed Fugazi fan, Mike Samsel. How does my key card still work? I have no idea, but I'm okay with it. I've been fired more times than Jim Ross. <laughs> but not as many as George Jetson. That's true. That's true. Yeah, there, look at me going again with my 50-plus-year-old references. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, nice timely reference. <laughs> nice timely reference. Way to, way to party like it's 1962. <laughs> Any game show themes you want to bust out? Uh... Pretty much all there was around that point was password, like Got old, it. old, old password. Wow, you had one on hand. Yeah, that, well, I mean, it debuted in 61, so it was starting to get its traction at that point <laughs> on 62 on CBS. That's absurd knowledge. It, it is. Uh, all that game show knowledge and all that wrestling knowledge. How the heck are you? I'm doing well, man. I'm living life, loving life. I, uh... You know, I, I, as some of you know, I have semi-transitioned into the 9-to-5 world. Uh, I'm still doing play-by-play -play with Westchester University. Okay. And uh, I'm doing some stuff with, uh, with cheap plug uh, crash-proof retirement, uh, doing some things with them. But, I mean, 
things are going well, man. I'm really, I'm really enjoying where I'm at in life right now. It's, it's fun. Uh, I know Charlotte Reese and all the great staff here at BCB is taking care of Bucks County and uh, I miss talking to you guys on a daily basis, but life, life's pretty good. Man, you're really soaking in the guest role. I like it. I feel like I feel like I just yeah, it's like an interview or something. I don't know, <laughs> right? Like, how is this? It, it's it was more so of like a hey, buddy. It's been forever, you know. Hey, pal. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're taped, pal. <laughs> we're taped. Oh, jeez. That means we can't do it again. No. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, Sid, we love you so. God, that was 22 years ago now. Where was it really? It was 96. God. I know. Like, we're... imagine, like, all right, so if you're listening to this show, and if you're of our age group. In, in your 30s. Yeah, in your 30s, late 20s, you probably loved the Attitude Era. Everybody talks about the Attitude Era, right? Now, the Attitude Era, at this point, is 15 years ago, if not more. Mm, I was going to say, yeah. yeah I mean, what, 97 the, really is when it started. Yeah, so we're talking the peak of the Attitude Era in like 98, 99. That's almost 20 years ago. Almost now. 20 years ago. So let's flash back to the Attitude Era. Put yourself at home Monday night, 9 o'clock, Doritos and Stone Cold T-shirt. Is, is this a self-personal pre- flashback here? Uh, shut up. <laughs> Think of what wrestling was at that time. We were five years away from WrestleMania. Oh, my gosh. Like, that's crazy to think about how long ago that was at this point. And yet people are still kind of hearkening for that era. I, I don't know about hearkening. I mean, we were just reminiscing about, about Psycho Sid. from. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't know if it was necessarily like, man, we want to go back to that. <laughs> right, yes. Yes, it's re- I will say wrestling is much better now with, you know, respecting women and all. Unless you're in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I was like, oh, do I let it go? Do I throw anything in there? But you just picked that right on up. <laughs> oh, gosh. We're just, we're off to flying colors already. Although on the bright side, by the end of the show, people are going to be going, Twitch who? Yes, hopefully so. It is Wow. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm just trying don't to hold fill back. In, I'm just trying to fill in admirably. I'm kidding. I don't want to come back here. <laughs> You're just doing me a solid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying you in beer. No, uh, hey, I'm fine Saturday afternoons at noon. It's the other 5 days. Mm, yeah, good point. So you're okay with this kind of every once in a while cameo type thing. Sure, sure. Hey, I love Saturdays at noon. I love Sundays at noon. (laughs) (laughs) I think we can piece two and two together on that one. (laughs) And we probably got five. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just speaking my piece. (laughs) Oh, uh, Ted is going to have words with me later. <laughs> Hi, Ted! <laughs> he's he's not going to know what I got myself... Well, he knows what I got myself into, but I don't know what I'm getting myself into. I love Ted, actually. I oh, cannot, no, Ted's amazing. He And I'm so happy Bob J. Quinto at Canada Summit. You know, I'm just breaking the fourth wall. We're just talking BCB at this point. <laughs> yeah, this um, is BCB weekly, apparently. <laughs> it really is. We're doing the show within the show right now, apparently. <laughs> Bob Giaquinto left the station, Teddy Fall named program director. I'm just so happy, man. That's such a genuine good dude. I'm so happy and could not be rooting for him any harder. Absolutely. Well, now, now that we've... Uh, now that we've uh, Am I forgiven? Jo- yeah, I was going to say, now that you're forgiven and, uh, and, and we've uh, apparently joined the Teddy Faw KMA club. <laughs> <laughs> just in case I can't say the other thing, because I've already... I've delved deep enough into the uh, into the trouble pool here today. Yes, yes. And Just it's only been, your presence. And it's only been ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Uh, but let's uh, let's talk a little backlash. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, uh, let's start off with the uh, the kickoff show or the, the the kickoff match from the the match from the kickoff show. One of those things. One of those things that sounds right. <laughs> from Sunday Night Heat. 
Yes, Sunday. <laughs> exactly. The Sunday night heat show. Yes. As opposed to the Saturday afternoon heat that I'm currently getting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm, I get to walk away at the end of this. Yes. <laughs> I get to limp, and as Mick Foley ever <laughs> exactly. so eloquently said, limping ain't easy. Right. I get to walk away. Fran gets to be escorted away. <laughs> escorted from the building. One yes. of the many brews that you can get at the Broken... Go- oh, no, wait. It's not, it's not 1238 yet. We'll, <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Although the way we sound, some would argue we're already there. Yeah, sure seems that way. <laughs> I swear we're not, though. I'm just deathly ill from allergies. Oh, God, that's why I can barely breathe, or at least it sounds that way. All right, so uh, Ruby Riot beating Bailey. Seems like Bailey has become, um, I don't know, she's the, the, the whipping girl, I guess. I was really excited because I thought Bailey was going to move to SmackDown during the Superstar Shake-Up. And I thought it would have suited her really well. Like, if anybody needed a shake-up, it was her. If anybody needed a shake-up, it was Bailey. Um, but I don't know that I would necessarily look at this as Bailey is the whipping girl, and she's, you know, never going to get a push again, and blah, 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 and all that stuff. If you look at the Raw women's division right now, it's Sasha, it's Bailey, it's kind of natty, and then it's shallow. You need to build yeah. Ruby Riot into something that matters. And, and that totally makes sense. Yeah, and she has to win matches in order to do that. Yeah, with a with a kind of uh, shallow pool, it, it is it is kind of difficult to do that. So there yeah. is that point to it. It just it seems like as I look at the uh, you know look at the different pay per view results, so and so defeated Bailey, so and so defeated Bailey, yeah, so and so yeah. defeated Bailey. So I think it's just more so the string of losses more so than anything. I mean, yeah, she's looking right. good in those losses. It's just. You know, there's a lot in the L column. Yeah. I mean, she's not quite, you know, a couple of years ago, trust the process, 76ers, but... No, no, and, you know, hey, she got a clean win over Sasha as well. Um, You know, we could sit here until the end of time and talk about the ills of 50-50 booking. Um, Because when WWE is trying so hard to make everyone matter, you kind of find yourself in a situation where no one matters. You're just trading victories. And they're, they're, right they're, now, they're trying to go like the old Sly and the Family Stone song, Everybody is a Star. Yes. And right wow, now. Wow, how's it, that for a reference? That is a great reference and a great tune. Um, right now, I mean, since the whole Alexa Bliss thing happened, uh, whatever that rivalry was, Bailey was booked to look like a jabroni. And I don't know that she's been able to shake that stench. Yeah, I'm sure it's shakeable. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's why they've been as well, for sure. Yeah, maybe that's why they've been kind of holding off on the wacky inflatable, yeah, arm tube flailing, whatever those <laughs> things are called. And you know, it, it's it's Alexa and Nia at the top, obviously. And if they're going to make Nia the dominant champ, then, you know, that's cool, too. You know, that's, I'm good with that. She, she will matter. She yeah. will be something big and important. And she, she will be what they were trying to make karma when she came in. Correct. And, you know, we'll see how we feel about the whole Ronda Rousey thing. Seems to be on the Lesnar schedule. We'll see what her dates end up looking like. Um, by the way, can I just make one quick point and get us off track slightly, as if we haven't been off track okay. enough already? Sure, yeah, get us back on track of being off track. Go for it. The whole booking that they're doing with Nia Jax, they're obviously referencing that Nia is built differently than the rest of the women's division. And that's to be embraced, not to be shamed. And that's awesome. I'm totally cool with that. I know it's getting the whole be a star thing over and fine. We all remember the Stephanie McMahon line, right? Philanthropy is the new advertising. Mm -hmm. So you are seeing through that. But hey, as a guy of a bigger stature who was quite frequently kind of made fun of for it, I'm cool with that. You know what I mean? Get the message out there. Get kids being good to each other. All good things. 20 minutes later, their top babyface, Roman Reigns, calls Samoa Joe a fat 
bitch. Uh, yeah. What are we doing? And I understand that needs to be beeped, and that's fine. You know, I have no problem with that. Yeah, you're not doing the beeping. I'm I am. not doing the beeping. Um, but what message are you sending? Don't make fun of women that look different. But Randy Orton on Kevin Owens? Body shame him all you want. Roman Reigns over Samoa Joe? Call him a fat B word. That's fine. What are we doing? And that's what takes what should be awesome booking in the Nia Jax Alexa Bliss rivalry and makes it so transparent that it's just advertising for the BSR people. And that's what's so frustrating about it. They don't actually care about that message. They don't even believe the words that they're having Nia say. <laughs> they're simply doing it for mud. For the pub. That's kind of disappointing. Yeah, man, I just dragging me down with that. Sorry, I, don't know, I know. I it's, we, were, we were laughing ten minutes ago. I know. I did, we were. Well, I, I didn't can't mean be to grind the show to a screeching halt. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> what was that? You tuning up the band? Yeah, yeah. Showstopper. Showstopper. Usually not my role, but oh goodness. Well, while while we're down there, we may as well get this story out there, and then we'll come back to uh, come back to backlash here. Uh, longtime pro wrestler Nick Big Bully Busick passed away this past Tuesday at the age of sixty three. You know, that that name ring a bell a little bit? It doesn't actually. I oh can't say that gosh, it, does. it was the only bully I remember is Blacktop Bully. Well, and Bully Ray, but oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy. exactly. Yeah, well, that was that was that was TNA. So sure. yeah, yeah, exactly, people. Tree falls in the woods. <laughs> and it, it, it did make a sound. <laughs> but no, Big Bully Busick was a wrestler. He actually wrestled in the WWF back in the late 70s. And uh, he wrestled, he was actually a wrestler and police officer uh, throughout the 80s and was probably better known in the WWF where he came back for as Macho Man would say, a cup of coffee in the big time. Uh, where he was managed by Harvey Whippleman okay. uh, in 91 and had some lower mid-card type feuds, but he was notable by his uh, yeah, that infamous gimmick of his of a 1920s bully with a turtleneck sweater, bowler hat, and king-size cigar. <laughs> Oh, yeah. man, wrestling in the 80s was the best and the worst. And, and the early 90s in yeah. this case. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, nothing nothing like referencing something from 70 years ago. Man, so see? It's right up my alley. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was he was the vaude villains before his time. <laughs> yeah, he he was he was yeah, he was the vaude villains during the muscular era. Right, right. So that, that's, that's basically what it was. Now, the cause of death hadn't been revealed, but he was diagnosed with cancer of the cerebrospinal fluid this year and was in hospice care. Yeah, that's... Uh, cancer sucks, man. It does. Cancer just sucks. And we don't, you know, we're, we're laughing and having fun, but we obviously don't mean to, in any way, make light of it. It's, it's no. sad, and, you know, all those names from our childhood that we talked about are... Dwindling, I and mean, it kind of sucks. Yeah, it, it does. And I guess because we've already had enough asides here, and since we're we're talking about cancer anyway, a little little fun thing that I've kind of been doing on the side here. You know that I've been doing some video game commentary, right? Over. I on, do. Yes. Not to be confused with the co-host of this, the part-time co-host of this show, Lucas Twitch DeSangro, <laughs> but uh, over on Twitch.tv. Sure. I've been doing some things over there, primarily with the Randomania Network, but just. This past Thursday night, I got to do a cool thing for a speedrunner on there. Sky Bills is her name. And every year she does a charity speedrunning. I mean, she calls it a marathon, but it's basically like a nightly thing for the better part of two weeks where it raises money for the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, uh, which is the premier uh, hospital for children's cancer and research and things of that nature. And, well... 
in just providing commentary for what was a race of the Legend of Zelda uh, randomizer, just in that maybe roughly two hours that we were on the air, we were able to help gather roughly twenty five hundred dollars. So cool. And yeah, and it was it was a really cool thing to be a part of. Sure. So you can check that out at twitch.tv slash skybills. That's S K Y B I L Z. And uh, and uh, there's going to be more still going on. In fact, as I believe she's trying to get. Well, she's already broken the record from past years that she's been doing this. She's been doing this for the last few years, but she's already, at least as of Thursday night, I haven't gone back to check the totals, but she was at well over twelve thousand seven hundred dollars so for the, for the that. and that was over the span of like a week and a half. Yeah. So, re- really fun thing here. Mm. Anyway, if you can help out, check it out. So that way, there, me and Ferran have to read less stories like this. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, it, it, it's no fun no matter what age, but, I mean, especially with kids. It's sure. just, it's yeah. terrible. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, parts go out to Big Bully Busick. Uh, remember, I, I actually hadn't heard of him until I saw the OSW review where they talked a little bit about that in 91. Okay. So, thank you to Jay Hunter and the boys for throwing that out there. And look at that. We are so late for a break. Wow. So, we're going to take care of that. And Sorry. That's... Uh, you know what? It it happens. It, it it happens when Lucas is here. It happens when you're here. It happens when I just ramble on, like I tend to do, and go off on so many tangents that it's like a dog on spider web. Anyway, we'll be back here. At least I think so. As I won't. <laughs> I'm wondering if I will at this point. <laughs> Ted could just cut me off here, and next thing you know, we've got an early edition of the Country Roads. But we'll see. Hope. Either Country Roads or Pro Wrestling Weekly next. <laughs> this is Pro Wrestling Weekly, or maybe this was Pro Wrestling Weekly, here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. All commentators heard on WBCB express their own views. Their opinions are not necessarily those of others on WBCB, including the staff and management. See, he's oh, got man. the Luigi death stare from Ferran, so he might have to I didn't him. give you the Luigi death stare. That's Shh, not true. You're breaking cave <laughs> Breaking cave <K-fame. laughs> Gonna break something else during this commercial. There we All go. Right. That's what I like to see. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your hosts, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Are okay. we getting into that controversy again? <laughs> Ugh, I know how it feels, and it's not fun. We're back. We are? Yes. Really? Well, yes. Wow. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Just like the Chappelle show, we haven't been canceled yet. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> for <laughs> for Andre alongside Mike Samsel and Lucas who? No. <laughs> uh, no, no, he is he's uh, he's doing some philanthropic things for the Monster Factory picking up Stuart Campbell, who actually was in studio with us here last week, the uh, the ring announcer. Oh, cool. Yeah, the, so it, it, doing helpful things. As much as I Mahoney bust on him, he's he's trying to do the right thing. He is. Sometimes he tries way too hard and it backfires, <laughs> but he's trying to do the right thing. Road the hell is paved in good intentions, Lucas. <laughs> Man, it he he must be drenched in sweat right now. <laughs> He is going to listen back to this, and he is going to shoot a sternly worded text in my direction. (laughs) We love you, Lucas. For the most part. For the most part. Yeah. So, yes, to Backlash. That's where we were. Then I get bumped from Backlash? I'm not good enough to call Backlash! Right. Uh, Prior to the... Yeah. All that, and we only got through the pre-show. We didn't even... (laughs) It's going about as long as the WWE pre-show at this no point. No kidding. All right, so the, 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 rest of the, uh, the rest of the matches, we'll definitely go through them a lot more quickly here. Uh, Seth Rollins being the Miz to retain the Intercontinental title. What a killer match. Man, yeah. that was fun. It was. I got to see a little bit of that before hitting the road back to, back to here as uh, I was up in New York. I was nice. up on Long Island. Oh, yeah. Yeah, doing some things for uh, uh, with the Monster Factory for NYWC. Nice. So you were up in my hood, up at CBS Sports Radio. Uh, not, not too far from there. Yeah. Yeah, up in Deer Park, New York. Right, right. 
Yeah, uh, g good folks up there. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll be back up there again. I pretty much, I, <laughs> it's amazing how just, and going back to what I said earlier about Twitch trying to do the right thing and trying too hard and it backfiring, in my case, doing just what seemed natural to be the right thing, it turned out it was more right than I realized. Nice. So, all right, we'll get into that story real quick because why the f not? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we're up there in, in New York. We had this uh, this seminar from from noon until two, and and then, or actually, I'm sorry, from ten until noon, and then we had a little bit of a lunch break, and then two o'clock the doors open for a three o'clock show. So, I went up there as a commentator. Now they don't have play by play, so that you know they didn't have any kind of setup for a commentator. So initially, the owner was going to have me as a social media ambassador. You know, hey, hey, it worked for The Miz back in 2006. Why not? Sure, yeah. So I was going to do some things kind of promoting NYWC as well as the, the Monster Factory, the MFPW. And then I go to where they have the entrance music set up, and it was a little bit helter-skelter, to say the least. So I kind of, like, just instinctively went over, and, and I guess the radio audio production person that I am kind of just automatically kicked in and basically I spent the entire show in the gorilla position making sure that entrance themes and sound was good. Oh, okay, cool. And the own like I, and I was just like, all right, I know this is an important thing to the show. We got to make sure this is got this gets right. And the owner was just so thrilled at the fact that I, I was apparently being selfless because most people would have been like, eh, forget the sound thing. I want to be, I want to mug for the camera, you know? Sure, yeah. You know, I want to, you know, get my mug out there on Facebook gotta and Instagram. Gotta get my FaceTime, brother, brother. Gotta get my FaceTime, brother, brother. Exactly. And me having the face for radio, I'm just the opposite of that. So <laughs> that is exactly why I just... Veron must pose? Uh, no, Veron must not pose. <laughs> Lucas must pose, on the other hand. <laughs> Hot dog and grandstand, you selfish. <laughs> so, so yeah, we'll 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 see. And actually, as I say that, I, something tells me that the TNT Express isn't going to uh, last too terribly long. But yeah, the MYWC that uh, that, that, that certainly it, it was a lot of fun up there. Uh, but the New York Wrestling Connection, you can check them out at nywcwrestling.com. Definitely some good stuff. So back to backlash. I think that may be the the, the, the name of this episode here, because right, it seems like we're always going back to back last year. Uh, so Nia Jax retaining the Raw Women's title, beating Alexa Bliss. Good stuff there. Yeah, it was a fun match. It I was fun. It. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Hardy beating Randy Orton to retain the U.S. title. Man, uh, Jeff Hardy's old swanton, and keep in mind, I don't watch TNA, so I don't know how long it's been like this. But he used to kind of glide over the person and just make contact with his head. Man, that looks like a buster of a bump now. Ooh. Like, yeah. he, cause he just lands on you, dude. Like, ooh, that doesn't look like it feels good. I would imagine not. Yeah. So, Daniel Bryan getting a big W over Big Cass. Apparently, I'm not sure there's a little backstage fodder, brother, brother. Yeah, that, uh, I, I heard big a little Cass bit about is in that. Some trouble. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, all right, first off, for those of you that don't know, the Brother Brother is an Edge and Christian show reference. It's really good. You should listen to it. It's much better than what we're doing right now. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so that's the Brother Brother reference. And then when Daniel Bryan, or when Big Cass had the Daniel Bryan impressionist Yes, uh, I was wondering out. how you were going to cleverly dance around yeah. this. Uh, apparently, he took some liberties with him that weren't quite uh, agreed upon. And uh, he's got himself a little heat, brother, brother. Oh, did, did you... Uh, okay, I, I'm presuming that wasn't intentional. What? A little heat? Yes, that was not intentional. Okay, just, just making sure. Well played. Well, now it's awkward. <laughs> No, it wasn't. You're trying to make it awkward. <laughs> Please, this is, a, this is a radio show. This isn't one of your dates. Ugh, dates. I remember when I used to go on those. <laughs> and now it got awkward. All right. <laughs> oh, man. 
When are we taking this two-man comedy team on the road? Yeah, Martin seriously. and Lewis, look out. Oh, man. And Carmella, she defeated Charlotte Flair in nine minutes to retain the SmackDown women's title. And I goofed on that and the Daniel Bryan pick, but eh, considering I got the first four, not too shabby. And then, uh, controversy, controversy, AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura ending in a no contest. AJ retains the WWE Championship. Unpopular internet wrestling opinion, Blair. Uh-oh. I loved it! I loved it! Here's the thing. I'm going to steal a great reference that Braun made off the air. Everybody loves Ron. Yes, everybody ramen loves noodles, ramen yep. noodles. Everybody loves ramen noodles. Do you want to go to the great place down in Philly and get a proper ramen? Or do you want to pour salt into a styrofoam container and pour water from your tea kettle in it? Let this build. You hated WrestleMania. And then it only proceeded to completely give you the Shinsuke Nakamura you've been looking for for a year with the heel turn. And then you hated Greatest Royal Rumble. And then that turns into prolonging the rivalry a little bit more. And now you hate this. And you're gonna love the Last Man Standing match. Let the story build. Let the tale tell itself we're all nerds this isn't going to be a seven and a half star tokyo dome classic the story is going to be told in a wwe fashion and guess what for all of your being and your moaning and your complaining this has been an awesomely told story so far Totally agree. Yeah. yeah they're, they're, I'm, what else can I add to that? I mean, I, other than it seems like the people who are complaining wanted, maybe as a kid they had their bedtime stories as once upon a time they lived happily ever after. <laughs> right. Maybe that's how they rolled. I don't know. I don't know. I, but everybody hated the WrestleMania match, and how good is this Shinsuke? The theme's awesome. Heel Shinsuke's awesome. I let, let the story tell itself. Let the story tell itself. Let, let, let the chapters develop. That's it. That's it. Exactly. And, well, so much for Nicholas. Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley now. Yeah, I know. It seems like Nicholas is an afterthought at this point. Boy, has Bobby Lashley lost all of the steam that he gained in TNA or what? Unfair? Uh, I mean, I'm sure that there's a large portion of the audience that was in diapers when Lashley was last in WWE. Yeah, that's fair. Which is amazing to think because, it, I mean, it was like eight years ago, it seems like. Actually, gosh, how long ago was it that uh, that Lashley was in WWE? Oh, uh, yeah, look at that. So 2008. So, yeah, it was long enough ago that uh, Nicholas might have been in diapers or maybe even in the womb when the last wow. time. Crazy. Yeah. Where does the time go? Well, we, yeah, are people hearkening for that, too? Yeah, no. No? No. No, mid-2000, or late 2000s, WWE. I don't think anybody wants to see Randy Orton and John Cena for the nine millionth time. Dive. Hmm. Oh, dot, 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 dive. Oh, are we going back there? No, let's not. <laughs> dot, 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 headlock. You're right. <laughs> I saw that uh, I, I follow a lot of the old culture guys uh, mm -hmm. that are now on a cultaholic, Adam Pacitti and all those guys. <laughs> and Ross Twiddell, uh when he did his WTF moments, called it uh, Backlash Rest Hold the Musical. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. Rest Hold the Musical. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Speaking and of matches we don't want to talk about. 
Oh, what a segue into the main event. Vince, it's Mike. I'm going to I want you to to listen to me here for a second. It's good to talk to you again. This wasn't Samoa Joe's fault. Don't you blame him? Don't you take away his push? Don't you say he's not over? Look in the mirror. Look at Roman Reigns. Look at what even Kevin Dunn couldn't hide. It's over, brother. Because Roman isn't. Hot takes. Get your hot takes here. <laughs> oh, wow. He's a heel. You, you, way, way to Brent this segment. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> He's a heel. What do you yeah. want? They're never going to accept him. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just still soaking that in. That, that, that was just, that was very powerful. Well, thank you. I, as you know, as I t- was bloviating about all of my awesomeness earlier, um, I also work at CBS Sports Radio. So I've been around... Oh, you've been around. Yeah, uh, the, uh, you've been around the, uh, the 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 take stove. Sure, a bit. I watch. I watch how the takes brew. It's in the building with Fan, obviously Francesa. Oh, okay. So I just I, I get to watch some of the take masters at work. I see how they deliver it. And they give their dramatic pauses. Sometimes they bring down the tone of their voice, so they whisper, so they bring you in a little bit. A lot of similarities to hot takes and, and a wrestling, wrestling promo. promo. So yeah. much. That, that, that is hysterical. I don't know how much of this I'm going to have to bleep. I don't think you'll have to bleep no? any of it. No, you don't think I'll have to bleep Princessor or FAN? Nah. No? Nah, we're cool with Intercom around here. Okay. I just, all right. Just, you know me, just watching my A-double crooked letter. No, no, I think we're good. We like the one in Philly. We do. They've, they've, we've, we've had a very good working relationship with them for a long while. I don't know where to go with that. Meanwhile, I really don't. The, yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. <laughs> exactly. Uh, man, man, we're just, we're just pulling bits and pieces from everybody here, aren't we? <laughs> a little, little Francesa, a little Bruno, a little. We're just, we're playing all the hits today. Yeah, that's it, man. Play the hits. Play the hits. Oh gosh. Well, uh, I think we're. God, are we really at that time already? Yeah, we are. Holy crap! Well, you know what time it is. I do. Uh, you've you've been on the show enough to know. Plus, oh. I referenced it earlier. It's twelve thirty-eight. It's, it's that time. It's that time. Yeah. Because today is a day to care at the Broken Goblet Brewery at 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Mm, beer. Yes, where if you missed it a couple of months ago or if you didn't and want more because it was so good, hurry over there now. Yeah, you better get over there now for the release of the second batch of No One Likes Us, We Don't Care, their unfiltered IPA. I'm out! No, what? no get back here! Uh-oh. <laughs> I'll 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 make sure we got the hookup. It's okay. okay. All right, good. I, I got you. I, I know people. All right, cool. Brown knows people. Brown I, got a guy. I I I, I got a few guys. <laughs> One of the rare times I'm making that statement. So as if this batch wasn't good enough on its own, it was brewed with the assistance of a very special intern. No, not Lucas. The Eagles Jason Kelsey. Nice. That's right, the, the namesake of the face sake that you see on the logo. The release is going to be in draft as well as Crowler format. Plus, there'll be food from Jay's Steak and Hoagie Joint as well as live music inside all day from 10 different artists, including, and I'm going to throw this one out there, if you happen to show up there uh, around 2.30, I want to say, uh, check out Killer Whale, as the drummer for that happens to be a good friend of the family's, uh, Ben Brown. So nice. say, hi, say hi to Ben from Killer Whale. He'll be behind the drum set, I want to say, around 2.30 over there. So there we go, a little, little plug for the, for the band Killer Whale and uh, good, friends of the, well, good friends of the fam here. 
Plus, my sister will be happy that I gave the shout out there to him. <laughs> It's all about keeping it good there. Now, if it's anything like the initial release, it'll sell out by 2 o'clock this afternoon, so you'll want to get on over there now. Not you. You're good. You're, you're, you're good. We're good. We're good. Uh, you're getting me antsy. I'm, I'm, I, no, you're okay. Okay. And despite what popular opinion may be, we haven't been drinking during this show. Yes. That, okay. Wait, popular opinion? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I can't anymore. All right, so yeah, get on over there now, and you can put fourteen ninety on the car. It's cool. So That's true. Yeah. You, you can listen to us do this thing that we do, and still make your way on over there. There, there is there is time for that. And also on tap, if you happen to miss out, or if you want something a little, well, if you want a little more something, I guess is probably a better way to put it. There's on tap the Angry Troll Amber Ale, as well as the 2018 version of Bubba's Tea Bag. Also, the Under Her Spell Saison, as well as the Tre de Marc, the Belgian strong ale that packs a punch at just over 11% ABV. That's a good brew. That is a good brew. And it's always a good time at the Broken Goblet Brewery, 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Broken Goblet Brewing, the semi-official brewery of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Please enjoy responsibly. Unlike us, where we're apparently not doing radio responsibly. No, there's no responsibility here whatsoever. There will be Monday, but not now. <laughs> Monday, the boss is listening to this now. Well, he'll probably text me. Be like, Faram, what was that? You're killing me. <laughs> I've got a cold. My Ted impression isn't as good as it usually is. Isn't good. Yeah, it's, we the got allergies. It. They're, 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 um, I'm a mess. As opposed to... As opposed to Lucas being the mess of the two of us. Yeah, that's fair. And I want that beer, so I better be nice to you for the next 20 minutes. (laughs) Exactly. Oh, gosh. When we come back, we've got news and notes to get into because we're finally not going back to Backlash. We made it. We made it. (laughs) It took us as long to get through Backlash as it took you to watch it. Just about. We were entertaining, though. (laughs) I sure sure as hell hope so. (laughs) Regardless, alongside Mike Samsel, I'm Ferran Derry, at least for now. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. All commentators heard on WBCB express their own views. Their opinions are not necessarily those of others on WBCB, including the staff and management. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, May 12th. On this date in 1997, WWF Monday Night Raw aired live from Newark, Delaware. In the main event, the British Bulldog and Owen Hart defeated Doug Furness and Phil LaFon, the Headbangers, and the New Blackjacks in a four-way elimination tag team match. On this date in 2003, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. In the main event, Kevin Nash fought Chris Jericho to a no contest. On this date in 2008, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Detroit, Michigan. In the main event, Randy Orton pinned John Cena. On this date in 2014, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Greenville, South Carolina. In the main event, Batista fought Roman Reigns to a no contest. This has been Today in Wrestling History, May 12. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com, or at least what's left of it. Alongside Mike Samsel, I'm Ferran Derry, and Mike is tittering behind his shirt at that comment. That's a good joke. (laughs) Joke. Yeah, jokes. We got jokes. And we got news, because it's only... 45 minutes into the show. We probably should get into that. Went a little long today. Yeah, just a little bit. Or maybe a little bit less after I trim it. Who knows? True. I have the power. <laughs> All well, right. Alive, yeah, we are a lot. Huh? No. Oh. Well, I mean, we're doing this live, but. Right. But now will be then soon. So when's now? Now. We're not doing the Spaceballs bit. We've already butchered it enough. (laughs) 
We don't have the comedic. This is the th- this is the things that I give Lucas crap for, and here I am. I'm, we're, we're, you're, you're trying to make me guilty of it. Trying to take a bit that obviously had very perfectly timed uh, timed comedy essence, and just putting it in a blender and regurgitating it out, and having it just come across half ass. Your rant about it though is good. Most certainly. <laughs> that, that, that that's probably gonna that's gonna go into a future return in the show. I got Ferran working heel today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, that's been since birth. That's fair. Actually, no that that's been since you did that edit for me ages ago. Oh God, for heel Ferran is the best character I've ever made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most certainly is. All right, so to the news then, to the news. Uh, So, for the first time since 2002, Major League Wrestling will return to New York. Nice. It'll be on Thursday, July 19th at the new Melrose Ballroom. They'll be hosting the event, and no shortage of star power there, including World Heavyweight Champion Shane Strickland, Pentagon Jr., Ray Phoenix, MVP, Barrington Hughes, Maxwell J. Friedman, Sammy Callahan, Selena De La Renta, and ACH are all confirmed. I'm pulling for those guys, man, as, you know... I listen to Bruce Pritchard and Conrad Thompson. I'm a big Something to Wrestle fan. Those guys are involved with MLW. The more good wrestling there is out there, the more competition there is. Good for everyone. And the more we have to talk about. That's true, too. Yeah, without good wrestling, we don't have a show. It's just two people tooling on each other. That's true. That's true. That was only the first half out. Yeah, exactly. Which is why we need more good things. No, that's not... We. It's just the tooling sometimes just... it. I don't know. It just it does its thing. <laughs> so this will be a Major League Wrestling Fusion television taping for BN Sports, and tickets went on sale this morning at MLWTickets.com. Also, WWE announcing that Alexa Bliss suffered a left shoulder injury during her match at Backlash on Sunday, and eh, they're still working on some further medical evaluations, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, now, this is interesting. So you might see a battle of the four horsewomen down the road. Yeah, it looks that way. That'll be cool. Yeah, former MMA fighters uh, Jessamine Duke and Marina Schaefer. Uh, they began training this week at the WWE Performance Center, according to WWE.com. Now, Duke, Schaefer, Shayna Baszler, and Ronda Baszler. Rousey. Did I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable there? You did. I did. Okay. Shayla, uh, Shayna Baszler. Yeah. Um, Ah, oh, big fan of hers, I no, see. No, 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 not that kind of yeah. I was, it was an excited yeah for, you got it correct. Not oh, okay. For Just making sure. So, Duke Schaefer, Shayna Baszler, and Ronda Rousey are known as the four horsewomen of MMA. And uh, Duke and Schaefer have appeared on WWE television in the past, and Schaefer is engaged to NXT wrestler Roderick Strong. So there's a lot of crossover let the speculation begin that the company will eventually build to the four horsewomen of MMA against the four horsewomen of WWE in Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, and Bailey. That would be fun. That uh, Survivor Series? Maybe not Survivor Series 2018. Maybe the greatest Survivor Series in Saudi Arabia? <laughs> no, no, they don't let women up. Uh, oh, yeah, good point. Oof. Also, uh, well, one place that women are being led into is uh, the, back into the E! Entertainment Network, as WWE announcing that the Total Divas reality show has been greenlit for seasons 8 and 9. Cena and Nikki breaking up is a work. Shh. The eighth season will premiere in the fall on the E! Network. WWE also noting that Tota Bellas returns for its third season on Sunday, May 20th. And you're all going to watch to see how Cena and Nikki, uh, um, wink, wink, break up. Thank you, internal whisper monologue. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It felt right, so I went with it. I'm okay with it. Uh, also, well, we mentioned UFC a bit ago. UFC and Disney's new direct-to-consumer and international segment, along with ESPN, have reached an immersive multi-year media rights agreement for exclusive live UFC content on ESPN+. Plus. That's pretty cool. I'm excited to see how that ESPN Plus thing turns out. Uh, speaking of rooting for things because it creates more jobs for everyone. Hi. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> 
putting uh, that bid in early, huh? Yeah, you know, uh, he got to work. Um, somebody's got to pay for the catering you provided tonight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but I, I that'll be cool. And that also, if you want to read the tea leaves, um, appears to mean maybe things with WWE and Fox are one step closer to becoming a reality. Hmm. Yeah, we have talked about that on here. That is true. So, yeah, uh, there will be uh, uh, 15 live UFC events streamed exclusively on ESPN+, and uh, each event will be branded UFC on ESPN Plus Fight Night, and will deliver a full card of 12 UFC bouts. Awesome. Good stuff. And uh, speaking of putting a bid in, on the heels of a report that we provided last week regarding Tampa, Florida, trying to be a major player in upcoming WrestleManias and Royal Rumbles... Orlando, Florida officials are hoping to bring WrestleMania back in either 2023 or 2025. According to ClickOrlando.com, they reported that Orange County, Florida leaders were scheduled to vote Tuesday on a plan to spend $1 million with the goal of bringing the WWE event back to Orlando, and vote they did, as the city is going to spend that million in the campaigning efforts. That'll be awesome. Commissioners also agreed to spend $2 million to host these special Olympic Games in 2022. The good news is now I'm kind of at a spot in life where financially things are a little bit better. So I'm rooting for WrestleMania to be in fun places so I can go to them. Fair enough. And there's nothing wrong with chasing mania. That's right. I said it. Moving on. <sighs> the money for both events... <laughs> <laughs> You're right there. Yeah, I'm good. The money from both events will come from tourist tax dollars. Uh, hey, man, WrestleMania is good for places economy. There's no doubt about it. Oh, it most they certainly paying is. all this money if it wasn't, man. That's, that's good stuff. It's so cool to see what WrestleMania has become. Yeah, that, that that was just me kind of giving my, like, very short piping hot take. Right. This is scorcher. Uh, yeah. Savvy at best. Right, yes. I'm sure Lucas is going to, no, Danny, Danny, look at what Ferran said. Oh, wow. Now I'm just totally shattering the fourth wall. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, hey, Cole Cabana, eyebrows. how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, Mike Johnson of PWInsider.com, he's reporting that Charlotte Flair will need surgery to repair a ruptured implant. Hmm? She's expected to undergo the surgery following WWE's European tour. Now, WWE has yet to confirm the news, presumably because there will be an angle to explain her time away. It ain't ballet. No, it definitely ain't. And another MLW note... Uh, June 7th, down at Guilt Night Club in Orlando. Speaking of Orlando, it seems like they've become the wrestling hotbed. They really have, yeah. Uh, they're going to be crowning its world tag team champions. There will be a triple threat elimination title match to determine the next tag team champions featuring Pentagon Jr. and Ray Phoenix against Jason Cade and Jimmy Utah against the Dirty Blondes, managed by Colonel Robert Parker. Yum, yum, yum. So Colonel Robert Parker is doing some work with Jack Swagger now too, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's yeah, he's ma he's me he's also managing uh, Jake Hager, better, you know, formerly known as Jack sure. Swagger, also in MLW. Awesome. Yeah. So again, great things that they've got going on down there, and that'll also be a taping for the MLW uh, Fusion uh, tape. Yeah, it'll be taping for it being sports. So good things there. And also, don't forget, the place to get action figures, replica title belts, sports memorabilia, banners, and more is at George's Cards and Collectibles. Coming up on Saturday, June 16th from 1 to 3 p.m., former Phillies and Mets baseball star Lenny Dykstra will appear at the Neshaminy Mall Cards and Collectibles show. A hero from my youth as part yeah. of that 93, that, that, that 93 team. That made me... Uh, my late father is smiling down. He's like, "You better go see them." Like that. That that was that was our team. Yeah. <laughs> Even though they fell a little short, and Joe Carter's home run still hasn't landed. No, no, it hasn't. Amazing, considering it was in a dome. <laughs> the Sky Dome. Yeah, not the Rogers Center. It's like 
that WrestleMania will take place in the Citrus Bowl, not Camp Memorial Stadium. Yeah, exactly. Ah, so many good things going. Anyway, George's has three locations for all of your cards and collectibles needs. Their original store at 7755 New Falls Road in Levittown, in the Neshaminy Mall in the movie theater wing, and their newest location in the Oxford Valley Mall on the second level next to Charlotte Roos. For more information, go to georgescollectibles.com and follow George's Cards and Collectibles on Facebook. Well, I think we've uh, just about ruined the airwaves enough here, so I believe it's uh, about time for that wonderful just about end of the show segment known as... Birthdays! Jerk. Perfect. You can, we'll, we'll use that and take over Lucas's spot. Lucas who? <laughs> hmm, that could also be a title of this show, Lucas Who. <laughs> <laughs> I love coming up with the titles to put up on the, on the YouTube replays of these. That, that's oh, become a awesome. fun little thing. In fact, you know what? We'll get you involved, too. If you guys out there have any good ideas, at Mike Samsel, at Ferran Burgundy? Mm, for, uh, at Ferran Derry. At Ferran Derry. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, if, if you're going Instagram, it's Ferran Burgundy. Okay, got it, got it. But I, I'm still one of those people that's like, what's an Instagram? Got it, okay. Technology confuses me. At Mike Samsel, at Ferran Derry. Name this episode. Yes, yeah, here we go. Or you can put it in the Facebook fan, uh, yeah, Facebook fan yeah, page, Pro Wrestling too. Weekly, at, uh, on 1490 WBCB. Yeah, oh, that's... I can't wait to see the suggestion. Oh, God, this is... <laughs> A terrible idea. But... It, it, it's an abysmal idea, but it, well, I, I love it. It should ensue. It most certainly should. Uh, yeah, so birthdays. Uh, on this date in 1971, Lyle Douglas Basham Jr. was born. The former two-time WWE Tag Team Champion, better known simply as Doug Basham of the Basham Brothers, turns 47 today. I liked the Basham Brothers before they were in that weird submissive gimmick. Oh, like the S&M kind of? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that got weird. It did. Can't blame Russo for that. No. No. On this date in 1975, Richard Young was born, the former XFL player from the Orlando Rage, and former WWE ECW competitor, better known as Ricky Ortiz, turns 43 today. What was your favorite Ricky Ortiz match? Oh, there's a way to put me on the spot. Yeah, I liked his last one. Wasn't that also his first one? No, it seemed that way, but no, no, he he had quite a few in there. (laughs) Memorable, really stuck with it. Cut that. Uh... And to the Brucey bonuses. Uh, in this case, we've got four things from outside of the world of wrestling. First, on this date in 1928, Burt Freeman Bacharach was born. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Burt Bacharach. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but everyone. The singer and songwriter who co-wrote numerous chart toppers, including This Guy's In Love With You, Raindrops Keep Falling On My Head, Close To You, and many other songs, uh, including What the World Needs Now Is Love, which you might hear on Austin Powers. Sweet love. Yeah. He turns 90 today. On this date in 1942, William Lance Swan was born. The country singer and songwriter best known for his 1974 crossover number one hit, I Can Help, better known as Billy Swan, turns 76 today. On this date in 19... Yeah, nothing on that one? Nothing. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'll play it afterwards here. Yeah, I'm sure you'll... It'll, it may sound familiar. It's got a familiar tune, I'm sure. Yeah. On this date in 1962, Emilio Estevez was born. Ah, Muddy Ducks. Yeah, the actor, director, and writer known for being part of the 1980s Brat Pack, starring in films such as The Outsiders, not Holland Nash, The Breakfast Club and St. Elmo's Fire, as well as being known for his role as Coach Gordon Bombay in the Mighty Ducks movies. He turns 56 today. Mm -hmm. Charlie Sheen's brother? Yeah, Charlie Sheen's brother. Martin Sheen's uh, son, yeah. Correct, yeah. And this one, uh, this one hits me in the feels a little bit. It's one of those damn we're old moments. Okay. On this date in 1968, Anthony Frank Hawk was born. The professional skateboarder and actor who is widely considered one of the most successful and influential pioneers of modern vertical skateboarding, better known simply as Tony Hawk, 
You might remember him from those video games, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. He turns 50 oh. today. Oh, that hurt. Yeah. Yeah, that one right in the feels. Oh, God. Why didn't you tell me this would turn into a Shinsuke Nakamura AJ Styles match? Oh, yeah, well, it definitely feels like a no contest. I will say, I love those video games so much. I had so much fun playing them when I grew up. But man, so much cool music that I would have never heard if it wasn't for those video games. It kind of oh, those soundtracks me were amazing. To that whole ska and punk and that whole genre. So much of my first kind of welcome into that scene was from the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games. And man, were those soundtracks so cool. They most certainly were. Well, that's going to most certainly do it for us. Mike, I want to thank you for uh, contributing to the end of the show or ruining it or contributing to the awesomeness of it. I don't know which. Maybe a little of all three. Ted, Merrill, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry, too. Until next week, where it may be country roads, who the heck knows. Certainly won't be me. Yeah, play us out, Nutsy. One o'clock in Old Wales. Celebrating 60 years of broadcasting excellence, we're 1490 WBCB.